Welcome to Growth Track. Heartland Church, in partnership with North Central Indiana Bible College, is excited to offer this discipleship program that will include, encourage, educate, and inspire you to be the person God has created you to be. Growth Track is divided into tracks and modules that dive deep into faith, answer questions you have, and connect you with Jesus. Combined with recommended readings, opportunities to grow through service, and a community of believers on the same journey, your transformation is inevitable. If you would like to become a student and earn college credit for this class, go to heartland.church and click on the Growth Track page. There you can see the requirements, application, moral code, and other information about Growth Track. If you prefer to just view this class for your own information and growth, that's great, and we hope this helps you grow. Let's get started. Welcome back to Growth Track. My name is Misty Hyatt. This is session four of the Gift of the Holy Spirit, the Ministry of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to go ahead and pray and we will get started. Lord Jesus, we just thank you tonight, God, for your beautiful Holy Spirit. We thank you that um, he is here to empower us, to help us live supernaturally, to help us live righteously, Lord. And I thank you, God, that we remember that you are that fresh air that is just coming into our lives, giving us life back, um, healing us of things that we've struggled with for a long time, Lord. So we just thank you, God, and we just celebrate that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so um, we talked a little bit about um, last session. We talked a little bit about what the Holy Spirit does for us um, and helps us with. Um, and I just kind of wanted to leave, like, end that note a little bit about how the Holy Spirit doesn't make us better than other people. The Holy Spirit makes us better than us because we deep down know, right, that we are not nice people. We are selfish and we are grouchy and we are sinful, but the Holy Spirit empowers us to be better than us, better than our, our flesh. So um, we're going to kind of um, go in a different direction now. We're going to talk a little bit about the word um, charismatic or charisma. And I know that that's another one of those buzzwords that we've heard. So hopefully you're not too freaked out by the word Pentecost or Pentecostal. Um, basically, it just means 50, right? And usually when people use the word Pentecostal to describe themselves or a church they go to, it just means that they um, have a church that believes in the Holy Spirit. Um, so that's just kind of one of those things that we've all kind of been freaked out about. And then charismatic is one of those other ones. Um, I've also heard it like charismaniacs. Um, we've, we've heard it all. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so, um, basically when I first got saved, um, and started going to a different church, there was, um, then the one I was raised in, um, I was a teenager. And so my friends, um, when I told them what church I was going to and that it was a charismatic church, they were like, does that mean that there's like snakes and stuff? Like, and teenagers are awesome. Like they ask that, right? Because teenagers don't have a filter. Um, charismatic does not mean snakes and stuff. That is not the definition. Um, basically, um, charismatic is a gift. Char charisma is actually translated the word gift. And God has some gifts for you. Um, basically, number one, we're going to kind of talk about again, is that eternal life gift, right? It stands on its own. Um, most of us know that famous scripture Romans 6 23 that the wages of sin is death but that the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus if there is not another scripture that you know you should probably know that one because that's a great one to talk about when people's lives are terrible and you can say well you know what it's because the wages of sin is death that the reason why your life is terrible is because everything every mistake you've made up to this like to pay that off is death there's just death but guess what? You have a gift, and that's eternal life. God has a gift for you. So I always say memorize that one. If that's the only one you know, that one in John 3.16, you can lead anybody to the Lord. Um, basically, the eternal life gift, right, remember, is free. We can't be earned before we receive that gift or after. Um, we can serve, we can pray, but that doesn't earn us anything. We don't have to pay it back. Um, we don't keep our salvation by doing things. It's grace. And a lot of times people get hung up on that. You know, they feel like, oh my gosh, like I don't get hung up on that. Like it's a free gift. When moms and dads give you gifts, you just open them and you take them, right? You don't be like, oh, do I need to, you know, scrub the floor? Do I need to, no, just take it. Um, the reason why I'm pointing that out is because that one is free, but the next gifts require some work to receive them. 
the charisma or the gifts of the Spirit. You have to do a little bit of work. So the next one is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And remember, we talked about how Jesus said, don't leave Jerusalem, wait. Um, and a few days later, basically, you're going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So the Greek word, like I said, charis, um, and we get the word charisma. Have you ever like thought of a person like, oh, that person just has a lot of charisma. That means that they're gifted. Like that's where we get that word from. Um, it actually means a spiritual gift or a divine enablement. And I kind of like the word divine enablement because it's like, oh, he's enabling me to do things. It's not just a gift for me. It's that he's giving me a gift that I can use for others. Um, and some are still confused, um, and people were confused in the Bible too. So in 1 Corinthians, the Corinthian church was confused about it. And um, in verse, or chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Now about spiritual gifts, brothers, I don't want you to be ignorant. And I think that a lot of us are ignorant about the spiritual gifts and about maybe what gift God has given you and how to use that. Um, and where did that confusion come from? Well, some people, and I kind of want to talk a little bit about that first church age. Basically, some people think that, um, and scholars think that actually the spiritual gifts stopped when the last apostle died. And we hear this a lot um, from very intellectual people that um, there were lots of gifts and the gifts of the Holy Spirit were only for biblical times. And when that last apostle died, then that's when it stopped. And this is actually called cessationism. Basically, it's rooted in that word to cease, to stop. Um, and this basically says that all of the gifts have stopped. However, if you have ever experienced a miracle... If you have ever seen someone healed, if you have ever even seen someone get saved, it hasn't stopped. I don't believe it's stopped. Um, I believe that God is still the great physician. He hasn't closed his shop. He is still healing. He's still breaking the chains of oppression. Um, and he's still giving the spiritual gifts. So it's kind of like you can either have it all or you can have it, he can have nothing. Okay, so we're either believe that the gifts are still in operation or everything has stopped. We can't pick and choose one or the other. Um, a lot of people um, don't believe that this is the case, that they don't actually have a problem. They actually have a problem with a couple of the gifts of the Spirit, right? And you guys all know what I'm talking about. And I know the Plymouth campus actually has a, had a very big, long conversation about the gift of tongues. And I think that that makes everybody uncomfortable. But we're going to kind of discuss that a little bit. But I kind of wanted to give you a little bit about what's going on and why we have been given the gifts um, of the Spirit. Um, and a lot of people say, like, I can handle the gift of faith. I can handle the gift of mercy. But there are actually 27 um, spiritual gifts that are named in the New Testament, but I actually think that a lot of people say that this is the one that people want to avoid. And we actually don't see it in operation very often, so I'm not sure why people are so freaked out by it, but they just are. That's the thing. Like, everybody is like, oh my gosh. It's like snakes and stuff, right? Like, what? You do what? Um, so listen, you never, ever, ever need to avoid anything that God has given you. God is never going to give you something that's going to hurt you. Okay, if God is giving you a gift, it is good. Um, but at the same time, it shouldn't be the only gift that we focus on. Okay, and I think that what has happened with that word char charisma or um, we, it seems like that's what everybody focuses that on. And that's not just the one gift. There's 26 other gifts. And I actually believe that there are more that we just don't see in the New Testament. And they're all good. And God wants all of you to have them. So here is what the Bible says about spiritual gifts. In 1 Corinthians 12, 7, it says, A spiritual gift is given to each of us. If we are a Christian, you have been given a spiritual gift. Now, we might need to mine it out of you. There might be a lot, you know, we're not sure what it is, but you have been given a spiritual gift. Why have we been given the spiritual gift? We have been given the spiritual gift, not so that we can be wild in church or bring attention to ourselves. No, it is basically, and it says this right here, so that we can help each other. Spiritual gifts are given to us so that we can help others. And it has an assignment attached to it. So that's why I want you to understand Salvation is free. Spiritual gifts come with a cost. It has an assignment to it. Okay? I personally believe that the enemy is going to do everything that he can so that you never, ever have this experience. 
that you never ever experience you using the gifts that God has given you to help other people. Because when you do, there is nothing like it. There's no um, satisfaction that you can get in the get in the natural world that will compare to the moment you use your spiritual gift and you see people come closer to Christ because of that gift that God's given you. In the Old Testament, only a few people had this experience. And I, you know, I think a lot of times I'll read the Old Testament and I'll be like, why are they so dumb? Have you ever read that before? Like, he just told them to stop doing that and then they did it. Well, they didn't have the Holy Spirit telling them, knock it off, stop. But these few people who had the experience were called priests. And on the day of Pentecost, actually something strange happened. There were no more special people. And if you look at the people who were the, basically the oppressors or the agitators against Jesus, these were the ones that actually operated in the spiritual gifts. And what happened was they, be, they decided that they were special not because God. They were special because they were just special. And so we see how that kind of turned. And when you see when Christ, and a lot of times, and we sing about this a lot, when Christ died um, on the cross, there was a veil that, was, um, that had separated basically where the priests could go and where the other people could go. And the moment that he gave up his life on the cross, that veil was ripped from top to bottom. And basically it was a sign saying, everybody. It's for everybody now. It's not just for a few. And that's what the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is for everybody who believes. Um, There's no more special people that could only have the relationship with God. The power of God hit everyone on that day of Pentecost. And here's the thing that really freaked people out, is that the Holy Spirit came down on people who weren't even Jewish, that were Gentiles, and that really kind of set people. And I'm so thankful because here we sit tonight, right, as Gentiles, but we have been adopted by the Lord. And it shocked them. And they were amazed that it was on every person. It was on men. It was on women. It was on people who were free. It was on people who were slaves. It was on old people. It was on children. It was on everybody. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants. But as soon as the first century church was done, they started to hire special people. And they actually made up words that aren't even in the Bible, like the word clergy. You can look all the way through your Bible and you'll never find that word. Because it's actually a word that they made up. And basically it means one who reads. Basically they said, listen, um, we're kind of busy doing our own thing. So you go ahead and take the Bible and you read it and then you tell us what it's about. And that got really, really dangerous. Because what they would do is they would be like, oh, well, you know what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to give me 95% of your money. You know what? If you really want to get saved, you need to sit, you need to buy this, that. And you, you went to all sorts of crazy things with indulgences and things like that. And it wasn't until um, a man named Martin Luther basically got the Bible, started reading it and said, this church is a mess. This is not what Christ wanted at all. And there was just so much. And if you hear a lot of people that are not believers, they'll talk about the Crusades and how, oh, Christians killed. Okay, here's the reason why the Crusades were such a mess. And I agree, it was a mess and we killed people and it was because we weren't reading the Bible. Because we hired people to read the Bible for us And they lied to us and they deceived us for their own power and we got way off. And that's not, that's exact, that's not what the Bible is supposed to do. And all the gifts, basically they said, the minister would handle all the gifts. You would get all the gifts and nobody else does and we'll just kind of, you know, take care of you guys. And the church in that first century decided they're going to sit on the sidelines and they even gave themselves terms like layman. You hear that, right? Oh, that's a layman person, like, because they're just laying around not doing anything. They're not using their spiritual gifts. But in the 1500s, like I said, there was the Protestant Reformation. And if you have never, like, read about the Protestant Reformation, it is, like, a complete awesome thing. Like, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing that happened. But basically what happened was um, Martin Luther started reading his Bible, and he talked about, he understood, like, that there was a priesthood of all believers, that there's no one special in the body of Christ, that we all are been given gifts. And um, they basically discovered the power of God and that the presence of God was not just for special people, it was for everybody. And they celebrated it, 
and basically they turned their world upside down and then they started denominations and then they went right back to it. And so that's what we see. We see it's the pastor's job to go and pray for the sick people. No, it's everybody's job to pray for the sick people. Oh, the pastor, you know, God calls certain people to be missionaries. No, we're all supposed to go and preach all over the world. Like, so we always want to kind of get back to that of kind of divvying that up and I'll pay you something so that you can do the work of the ministry. No, God has called leaders to help you be equipped for you to do the ministry and for me to do the ministry. So basically, um, that, I think that that's what I love about our church so much is that we don't want our church, like, please don't ever say, I go to Heath and Misty's church. Don't say that because it's not our church. It's your church. That's my church. Um, I always say, like, it's my Jesus. And I, sometimes I kind of feel silly about that, but it's like, no, like, he can be your Jesus or he can be your Jesus, but he's my Jesus. I have a relationship with him. Um, but there are gifts inside of you, and we want you to find those gifts and use them to make a difference. So here is a very, very long definition of spiritual gift. You guys ready? Everybody's like getting their pens ready. A spiritual gift is a supernatural ability. Not any ability, anything that you can come by on your own. A spiritual gift is a supernatural ability that God gives to each of his children so that together we can advance his purposes in the world. I'm going to say that again. A spiritual gift is a special supernatural ability that God gives to each of his children so that together we can advance his purposes in the world. A supernatural ability is not something learned or a talent. It's a gift that God gave you. We all have been trained, right? We've either went to college or, you know, we've been trained on a certain line of work. We've all been trained. This is not what that is. It's not that you have your master's in business. It's not that you have your degree in nursing. This is a supernatural gift, something that God just gave you. A supernatural ability is when it works best when all of us do it. If we can all figure out what our, our spiritual gifts are and we all do it together, We won't need anything. We won't lack anything. And for his purposes, right? We don't do it for our purposes. In other words, he has some things that we need all of us to do. We're on assignment and we can't accomplish it until we discover what they are. Some of you are called in the mission field. Some of you guys have that gift of just compassion. And I love, here's the thing that I think I'm so frustrated with our culture about right now. There are certain groups of people, especially in our nation, that are very concerned about a certain group of people. And there are other groups of people that are concerned about another cause. And for some crazy reason, if you are concerned about these people, you can't just be okay with other people being concerned about this cause. You have to fight each other. That is not what God's called us to be. I think about it like this. When you form a circle with somebody and you're looking inside and I'm looking at Shannon and I'm saying, "Mm, I would do that differently. And I'm looking at George, oh, I would do that differently. And George is looking at me saying, oh, she should do that differently. And Shannon's looking at George saying, oh, he should do that differently. What we all need to do is we all need to turn outside. Because instead of picking apart each other, we need to turn outside because churches do this all the time, friends. And we need to say, this is what God's called me to do. I'm going to take this. And George is going to say, this is where I'm called to go, and these are the people that I'm called to minister to. I'm going to take this region. And what happens is when we turn outward and we start looking at God's purpose, we really are too concerned about how Shannon and George are doing their ministry because they're advancing the kingdom. And if you're advancing the kingdom, you're busy, right? You're busy doing things. But what happens is we turn in and we start nitpicking about other things, and we stop using our spiritual gifts for his purposes, and we start getting all opinionated about how this person's doing this and that person's doing that. And that is why our church, that's why our church, the capital C, is not successful in our, in our nation. That's why we're just insignificant. You go to church, why? Because we're all nitpicking about, I don't like the carpet in the kids' ministry. Well, I think that we should have bigger bulletins so that we can read them better. Just go out. Yeah. 
God's called us to go out rather than look in. And when we start going out, that's when, that's when people will notice. That's when people will love things that, that we're doing. But a lot of times we just get so focused on that. So maybe your gift is hospitality. That is a spiritual gift. That is a spiritual gift I don't have. When you come to my house, <laughs> when you come to my house, just don't come to my house. <laughs> Give me at least three or four days because I'm going to have to like, and, and Heath loves it, and my kids love it. When somebody's coming over to my house, it's like Misty turned into an evil person. And I'm like, why didn't you just grab the tub? And it's like, it's just, that's just not my gift. I love people. I love kids. I don't love entertaining at my house. That's not my gift. It stresses me out. Heath is like, yes. Agrees. He agrees. You know, there is somebody that could walk into this room with a gift of administration, and they could have been like, oh, there's not going to be enough tables tonight. I need to put more tables up. Oh, these chairs are kind of crooked. And they could see that, and another person comes in and says, wow, that person's sitting all by themselves. They have that gift of mercy, that gift of compassion. And so there are two different people that see two different things. Who's right? Both of them are. Because if they're operating in their gifts, the person with administration is going to get those rows straight and those tables set up. And that person with mercy, that gift of mercy and compassion, they're going to love on that person. But you can't love on a person when you're straightening chairs. And you can't straighten chairs when you're, not, when you're loving on a person. That's why we're called with different spiritual gifts. And so many of us, love our own spiritual gifts and our own personalities, right? That we think everybody should be like us. I'm so thankful people are not like me. So thankful because I know I would probably drive my own self crazy, right? <laughs> they are unique gifts that God gave them to come together and advance the kingdom. This is the bedrock of the New Testament. This is the bedrock of the message of the church. We are not called here to build a church. We are called here to reach our world. Our church just equips us. We want you to discover and develop the gifts that God's given you um, and take more territory for God. So that question would be, how? Right? You're like, okay, how do I do it? Basically, you just need to discover the gifts that God has for you. It's not going to be your natural skill set, like I said. If I had followed my skill set, I would not be in the ministry today. I would be an accountant somewhere. Punching numbers. Maybe. I don't know. I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Romans 12, 6 says, we have different gifts according to the grace given us. We want to get you guys into a scenario where you are exposed to the 27 gifts of the Bible, even the ones that might not be listed in there, because as the world changes, God has new gifts. Obviously, they didn't need a gift of technology back in the biblical times. But I will tell you that there are people that are gifted for technology. How many of you guys have YouVersion app on your phone that has the Bible app? That, there is a man, basically, who goes to a church in Oklahoma City who basically said, I think I can do this. He's independently wealthy because he's a software designer. And he says, I think I can make the Bible available to as many people as I possibly can. And if you've looked, there are thousands of languages on there, thousands of versions. That's a spiritual gift, guys that most of our teenagers are walking around with that app on their phone, that's amazing. That's awesome. That's a spiritual gift. That's not a spiritual gift you'd probably see in the Bible because, right, they didn't have cell phones back then. Roman, or, I'm sorry, when we get gifts and grace are those the words, right? What is charismatic? It's basically just using your gifts. If I call you a charismatic, it's because you're using your gifts. It's because you're rocking a baby. I'm going to talk about Kevin for a second, and I know he probably doesn't want me to, but Kevin one time walked into the nursery and this baby just was crying for every single person. Like, just hated everybody. And Kevin comes, picks that little girl up, and she falls asleep on his arm. That is a spiritual gift. That's not something that Kevin went to school for, right? <laughs> That's probably not even something Kevin thought he had in him. But that was that spiritual gift. And maybe it's gone. And I will tell you guys that I think a lot of times... Um, spiritual gifts develop too. That there are things that when we first start out, we're great at, and then we kind of get bored with them. And that's okay. Don't freak out about that. That's okay. Because I've done that before. And I actually have some personality tests and some um, spiritual gift tests and assessments, uh, assessments um, that, that I'm going to give you guys tonight. Um, and the funny thing is, like, I've actually seen my personality change as God has grown me a little bit more. I used to be, like, a little bit more, like, people-pleasing, and now I'm like, 
oh, kind of a leader. And I like when people are happy with me, but it doesn't really bother me if they're not anymore. Um, you know, some people can travel and go to Africa. That is not my spiritual gift. Like, I love sending Heath and the team, and I'll pray for him, and I'm like, I'll hold the fort down. I'm so excited. But listen, guys, I took a bunch of teenagers to Guatemala one time. Oh, Lord. It was awful. It was awful. I mean, I don't know what smelled worse, like the open sewage or the sweaty teenagers. It was rough. It was so bad. And actually, I will tell you, like, and this is just the craziest story. So I didn't know this, and you probably wouldn't either. But we slept in like this open air um, hotel. I mean, it was called a hotel, but I would think it was more kind of camping. And in Guatemala, apparently if it's your birthday, people wake you up on your birthday by putting firecrackers in the garbage can outside your house. Well, when you're on a mission trip with 20 teenagers and you hear that at four o'clock in the morning, you think it's gunshots. Just so you know. <laughs> um, yeah, so we all like go underneath our beds and are like freaking out. And none of our missionary friends are coming out like the local people um, because they all laughed at us later at seven o'clock in the morning when we ate breakfast. Um, I'm not a missionary. And God will probably call me to be a missionary now, now that I've talked about it. Um, but you know what? There are some people that are like, oh my gosh, I saw this elephant. And you know what? I didn't take a shower for like seven days, but it was so worth it. And the people are so amazing. And it's just like, mm, no, thank you. I'm good. But that's why God gave us different personalities and different gifts. Psalms 139, and I would love for you guys to be able to read this scripture and actually believe it about yourself. It says, for you created my inmost being. You have desires, friends, that God has placed in you in certain things. You love what you love. You cry over what you cry over because God placed them in you. You see things through a certain lens of your spiritual gift. You might be like, why in the world is nobody under, why isn't that not bothering anybody? Because that's your spiritual lens. That's your gift. That's what God's given you. Maybe you have that gift of helps and you're like, man, somebody needs to fix this. Do it. Step out in it. Um, the second thing is, um, ask God to just develop the gifts in me. You know, we need to ask God to develop them. 1 Corinthians 14 says, follow the way of love, but eagerly and desire the spiritual gifts. If you're like, I don't know what my spiritual gifts are. Desire that. That is not a bad thing to desire. Hmm. I have so many other things to add, and I only have five minutes. All right, I'll just have to stop at a weird spot, but that's okay. Um, basically, um, this is what I'm going to do tonight because I kind of want to just give you kind of a heads up. Um, I am going to upload a personality test and a spiritual gifts test um, for you online. I do have paper ones for those of you who are here. Um, but it basically, like, when you take the tests, the personality one only takes like five minutes. But when you take the spiritual gift test, and these are not exhaustive, so like if you feel like, oh, I don't think that was my spiritual gift, um, take a lot of time with it and it'll say like do you pray for people of the nations and you all of the questions you will feel like I should say like always on that you know what I'm saying like I'm a bad person if I don't um don't answer them like that don't answer them like I should answer them truthfully I'm not going to look at them these are for you okay but this will help you understand a little bit more of your spiritual gifts there's tons and tons of spiritual gifts online, assessments online that you can look up to. But this might just give you a little bit of, of a taste of that. It does at the very last page or the very last part of the assessment online give you the list of the, um, of the spiritual gifts. So you can look through and be like, oh, and it actually gives a scripture for that. So if you've been interested in the gift of tongues and interpretation there are scriptures on there that will explain when that is appropriate and when that happens i don't believe that it happens all the time because it freaks people out but if it does happen we need to know and to explain biblically to the people in our church or the people around us why that happened and what that does if there's a spirit of prophecy um you know somebody has the gift of prophecy where that they can kind of see ahead things ahead of time um I always say this because sometimes God speaks to me prophetically. It may have been pizza that I ate the night before, but I feel like I would never ever say, this is exactly what God is saying to you right now. But most of the time, when you have that spirit of prophecy, 
most of the time people have already felt that in their spirit because God likes to speak to us from the inside not necessarily the outside. So usually when God has to speak to us from the outside and we haven't listened to him a lot when he was speaking to the inside. And so those spiritual gifts are beautiful moments. And I don't want you to look at these spiritual gifts because I think that people have used them wrong or used the terms wrong to manipulate people as well. We want to make sure, remember, that we use our spiritual gifts to help people, not to make us feel important, not to give ourselves goosebumps, not to make people do what we want them to do. We use them to help other people and to love people. So we're going to close in prayer tonight. Yes. Okay. On the website. Yes. Thank you. On the website, if you click on growth track, you'll be able to see all of, on the right hand side, you'll be able to see all of the, it would be this way, um, all of the classes. If you click on ministry of the Holy Spirit, it'll pop up like the syllabus right underneath the syllabus it'll have like the spiritual gifts test. So like you'll have to scroll down past where the videos are, the video links, and it'll be right under there where that's where the personality test and the spiritual gifts. Churchoftheheartland.com is where you have to start out first. Then click on growth track. All right. Thank you. Sorry. (gasps) Not very good at this. All right. This is not my spiritual gift. Let's close in prayer. Lord Jesus, we just thank you, God, for the gifts that you've given us, God. We thank you for Pentecost, God. We thank you for charisma, that those gifts, those spiritual gifts, those enablements that you have given us to help other people, God. So I thank you that as we dig and we find and we learn a little bit more about ourselves, God, I thank you that you encourage us and give us opportunities to use those spiritual gifts. God, I thank you that you are just pouring gifts of intercession where people pray for other people, God, over us. I thank you, God, that we are going to turn our circle outward. Instead of looking at each other and seeing the differences and being all backbiting, God, we're going to turn out, we're going to face the world, and we're going to take territory for you, Lord. So I thank you, God, that you just show us those spiritual gifts that you've given us. You show us the purpose that you've given us, God, so that we can reach the world, so that we can reach our friends, our families, our neighbors. God, I thank you, Lord, that you are just depositing things in our lives tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.